In the world of whiskey, we love our terms, all kinds of terms, cask strength, barrel strength. What does that mean? We're going to find out. You will? Okay. Welcome back to Whiskey Outpost, everyone. As always, I'm Chris. I'm Tina. And I have footage of her sticking her tongue out of the camera. Get ready for some outtakes right after this. Uh huh. Mm. That's going to happen. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah, we like to talk about whiskey. We act a little silly. Uh, and so, we hope that you like and subscribe and come back while we talk about all kinds of foolishness, including terms of the bourbon and whiskey makers' art. Because there's a lot of a lot of terminology that gets thrown out that I don't know if I didn't know what it meant when I started. And now that I'm trying to get more into whiskey and really understand what's going on, there's a lot of these terms that, that make a huge difference in the product that you buy. And I kind of wanted to talk about it. And so I have you here to tell me when I'm making no sense. And uh, I kind of want to see if you have any idea what these are as we're talking about them. So you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So the, in no order, just kind of what I wrote down here on my notes, which I'm going to refer yeah, to. Yeah, and I can't see them, so yeah. I'm not cheating. It's not, it's not a game. It's not a, I guess we can do points. Um, do you know what cask or barrel strength means? So you'll see a lot of bourbons, and it's like, you know, Perrin's famous bourbon, cask strength. No idea what that means? Have you seen that before? Like, if you turn around, you'll probably see it. Yeah. I mean, is it just like how... How much of the taste went into the whiskey? It actually means that it is bottled at the same proof that it came out of the barrel. Oh, so no water was okay. added to it. Okay. Um, and this is a truth. There's a truth in labeling laws that support this. Uh, so, you know, bourbon has to be at least 80 proof, but can be more. And so the, the exciting thing is it's not watered down, right? So the less exciting part is that the distiller, because they're not watering it down, it means that there's less of it. So it's more expensive. But it also should be a more a more proofy drink. I mean, it should be bottled at higher proof. Okay. So if you if you see why people get excited about cask strength, it's usually because they like a fiery drink, and you know they are excited that there's more. Yeah. Um, it depends, right? I mean, you, there's some some that are good, some that are bad. So, do you know what uh, full proof or entry proof means? If you see a full proof bourbon. I mean, it sounds the same as what you just said. I thought so too, but um, it's actually bottled at the proof that it entered the barrel. So there's actually more water at the start of the of the aging process than there is at the end, because if it's sitting in that barrel oh, for so two they years, add just enough water to bring it back to where it yeah. was when it went in. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Exactly. So, um, you know, that's. I think that's also one that's pretty exciting because, you know, again, there's going to be less of it because if something comes out of, goes in the barrel at 125, mm -hmm. goes up to 150 during the aging process, comes out and it's bottled at 80 proof, that's definitely going to affect flavor notes. It's going to affect how, it's going to affect how strong it is and that sort of thing. So that's kind of cool, right? Yes. You can hear our dogs. Up, hopefully you can hear our dogs upstairs. The whiskey outpost. Pets, True. yeah. <laughs> we left them upstairs, yeah. But uh, yeah. they sometimes they they make their presence known. Mm -hmm. um, so the next thing we will look at is what is a small batch? I assume a batch is just small. Yeah, exactly. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. So I wanted to start with ones you're going to see on a label and that can affect the flavor. So if we're talking about you know any distillery, they may make I mean, they're going to make a, a billion different barrels, right? And they're going to pour their distillate into the barrels. It's going to sit there. It's going to age for at least how many years? Two. Two years if we're talking about straight whiskey or bourbon. Um, and so it's going to pick up flavors from the barrel, do all that kind of exciting stuff. And so then in a any large operation, those barrels are going to get bottled. Small batch means that the number of barrels that you – that will – contribute to the final product is smaller. It's not all the barrels. It's the select barrels. And the idea behind this is that folks that have a lot better palate than, than most of us are going in and they're picking out barrels 
that uh, contribute to a better flavor. Uh, so our son just stopped by to say he's running back uh, to get food. Um, so <laughs> yeah, we're talking about with uh, small batches, they don't take the full collection of all the barrels. They just pick out some because they've got people who have good palates. They're saying these are good barrels, better than the general population of barrels. And we think we can make a better product out of it. Sometimes I fear that is a term of marketing rather than there actually being a huge difference, but who am I to complain? And I don't know, I've never done a, a taste test, but uh, I do wonder about variations um, in a small batch versus a larger batch because there is no rule about how many barrels go into a small batch. So if you made a thousand barrels, your 999 of them could be your small batch. I mean, probably mm -hmm. not, but I don't think that there's any rules that surround, surround that. So uh, you may end up paying more because small batch, there's less of it, fewer barrels. You may end up paying more for not a particularly better product. Maybe. Like, I'm not pointing fingers at any distillers. I'm just saying that there's a chance. Okay. So what about the term single barrel then? Only aged in one barrel? Close. It's only bottled from one barrel. Oh, okay. So like a small batch is, you know, let's say you made a thousand, you pick ten, that becomes your small batch. Single barrel is is you just that one. one. Yeah, exactly. Um, you're gonna get great uniformity uniformity. I don't know why I even try to say that word. Hard. Words are hard. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink more just so I've got an excuse. Mm. Anyway, um, well, you've got greater uniformity across all of the bottles because they all came from one barrel. What you don't have is uniformity from one single barrel to another because it's it's, it's a barrel, a different right? Barrel. Different temperature can affect that. Uh, you know, hopefully, again, you've got people with really good palates. They're going, they're saying, okay, this is this is a really good barrel. Like this is better than the stock. It was warmer. It was cooler. It got better variation in temperature, whatever. Factors contributed to it being better, and we're going to sell it as a single barrel. So if you are a collector or you like special bottles, go for the single barrels, because once they're gone, you're never going to get that again. That that new charred barrel is gone. It has become furniture or was sold to a brewery to make beer or something like that, right? You're never getting that back. So that is kind of cool. And I you know, so just something to think about it if you want something unique. Done it so far? That's so far. So what do you think the difference between a single barrel and a store pick is? So this is a trick question. Do stores pick? Yeah, usually the stores <laughs> the stores are picking it. Yeah. No, the stores pick a single barrel, right? A lot of times okay, they store so pick, they a, pick single. a single barrel and then go to that. Or sometimes store. they may do a, store, a small batch. Or they may, I mean, they may not, there may not be a single barrel involved, but a lot of times I believe there is. I think a store is either going, has a, has a relationship with a distiller, and they go and they say, yeah, we want that one barrel. Uh, sometimes the distillers send uh, barrels, uh, samples, to the store and then they pick one. And sometimes the distiller will just pick a barrel for a store without the store ever actually having tasted it. Which, I mean, is still, it's still a store pick, right? It's still a special relationship between the distiller and the store. I like to think that the store is actually having some input in that. So what you want to do is look for a barrel that was selected by the store as opposed to a barrel that was selected for a store if you see a store pick. But I think there's some debate amongst the bourbon community if store picks are actually better than not store picks. I personally will always go with a store pick because I think that there is at least some someone behind saying, okay, this this juice is a little better than the rest. Okay. What about, so if that's a store pick, what's a private label then? Is that like where somebody distills it and then they name it something else. Correct. And so I wanted to point this out. Good, really good. Uh, because cask strength, foolproof, small batch, store picks, single single barrel, all of those 
are you know very clear what the relationship is between distiller and store once you get into private label then yeah it is a distiller that is you know is making it and then i'm private labeling as you know parents famous bourbon so like that whole deal we did about is buffalo trace trader joe's yeah exactly yeah it's not a problem with it. It's actually a very important part of the whiskey world, especially for distillers that are just starting off because it takes two to four years to get a distillery so going. Ready, yeah. You can go to a place like MGP, which makes really good product and say, make, you oh. know, I want to buy some of your stuff. I'll finish it myself or whatever. And I can get a product on the shelf in six months to a year, <laughs> as opposed to, yeah, you know, there's a little nose over here. You <laughs> I can't see it. You can't see it. I can get some on the shelves. And then eventually <laughs> my product gets out. So there's one more term we're going to talk about, and then we will bid you adieu. What's cigar blend? You ever heard of cigar blend? Cigar blend? Cigar like blend. smoking a cigar blend? Yeah, yeah. Do they do it like tobacco? Well, tobacco doesn't get aged in barrels. No. As near as I can tell, this term is absolutely just a marketing term. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. um, so Joseph Magnus has a cigar blend, as does Bit and Bridle. And I think oh, I saw like, one. This is supposed to be what you drink when you're smoking the cigar. Exactly, okay. and people are paying a lot for it, which is why I brought it up. I have no problem with people paying a lot of money for bourbon. I just bought a fairly expensive bottle of Joseph Magnus myself, so it's not a, not an issue. I just Did want you people know? to. You were there. I told you how much it was. <laughs> so the thing is that just know that if you go to buy a cigar blend. As near as I can tell, and I checked both the Bit and Bridal website and the Joseph Magnus website, they say it's better with a cigar, but yeah, there's not tobacco wasn't a secret ingredient or Is something it like, like that. kind of like like wine pairing. I think so. Yeah, like this wine yeah. goes well with fish. Yeah, and this and wine goes. All reports are the Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend is a fantastic drink. So don't get me wrong; I'm not criticizing them. I'm just saying, you know what you're paying for. So hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, I had fun researching it, and uh, I had fun drinking. So cheers to another episode of Whiskey Outpost. We'll see you next time. <laughs>